Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So is it guys, is it a Canadian Bitcoin pump that we're seeing at the moment here? So I've got Bitcoin here on the hourly, $44,200. And uh, over the uh, evening hours last night and overnight last night, we did see Bitcoin rally. You can see that uh, distinct rally to the upside from yesterday. It's up over 5% right now. Lark Davis here pointing out something interesting. Are the Canadians pumping the price of Bitcoin? Guys, I'm going to get to that point later on in the video. Um, I want to talk about Bitcoin first for a little bit now. Discuss what's going on worldwide. So Kelly Callum here posted this, bringing it back to the technicals right now for Bitcoin. Bitcoin has crossed the bull bear signal line, light blue line, peaking just above the red signal on the volatility momentum line, showing the start of bullish momentum. Price is still in very neutral territory right now with plenty of room to up and down. So stay vigilant. Here is what he's talking about. The light blue line right over here peaking above that red signal. Okay, so Bitcoin still poised for an upside trend and uh, socio-political events, which I'm going to get to later, could help trigger this to the upside. Uh, we can see Bitcoin here on the daily. Take a look at that, a lot of momentum uh, positively flowing to the upside for Bitcoin coming out of what is looking like this uh, inverted head and shoulders pattern. So uh, what we do need to see, however, is we do need to see Bitcoin kind of crack that and if we want to take bodies we can take it down here but if we want to take wicks we take it up here um ultimately though we need to see bitcoin get above this level here to confirm bullish territory once again we also have blake on twitter here saying you know it has a distinct pattern in downtrends in the cvd and gaussian channel on the daily illustrated nicely macro slash world events are clearly an x factor right now so going back to those socio-political events uh, hint, hint, some stuff happening in Canada currently at the moment, but otherwise, in my opinion, Bitcoin looks closer to the end of its downtrend than the beginning. So the downtrend coming to an end, just showing us that four wave pattern and how we've seen that in the past, uh, demonstrating that this could be the end of that bearish move. And so now we should be looking forward to the upside. So a lot going on for Bitcoin. It has uh, taken up XRP price uh, ever so slightly. XRP trading right now at 83 cents. But, you know, at this point in time, speculative, the rest of the crypto market is just following Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin is the one to be paying attention to today, especially today, considering what the Canadian government has just announced. Uh, I'm going to keep going, guys, because I wanted to just uh, touch on some Ripple XRP news. Ripple just uh, recently did uh, release a report, too, that is going to tie into what I'm going to talk about in a bit. First, though, I wanted to mention this. This is a tweet here from Yoshitaka Katao. I'm just going to translate that tweet. Approval of listing of shares of SBI Sumishin Net Bank Limited, an affiliate accounted for by the equity method of company, and partial sale of shares owned by the company SBI Holdings. So we are seeing some more development, guys, through SBI Holdings. Uh, just going to translate that. So now it has been stated that there is an approval of shares with regards to Ripple Partner SBI and their subsidiary Sumishin Net Bank. Uh, SBI Sumishin Net Bank Limited, an equity method method affiliate of the company has been approved for listing on the first section of the Tokyo Stock Exchange today. Along with this, we are planning to sell some of the shares of the bank owned by the company. So we would like to inform you of the following. And so uh, here's just uh, some more information for shareholders with regards to that particular deal. Don't want to get into this in too much detail, but uh, it is just important to make note of Ripple Partner SBI and what they are doing all the way over there in Japan. So uh, just another update there from Japan and from Ripple Partner SBI. The big thing though today, and one of the more prominent themes of this video, is what is happening right now, sociopolitically, you know, just starting it off with Bitcoin price rallying, Lark Davis asking, Canadian Bitcoin pump. And, uh, you know, I saw this yesterday and uh, this does have to do with what I'm going to talk about next. It just so happened to come out yesterday, this coming from James Rule XRP. So this is the most recent Ripple Insights blog concerning open banking and how it's on the rise in North America. So let me just start off by reading you guys a little bit of this. Open banking on the rise in North America. Open banking is poised to transform business operations and payment transactions across North America. As fintechs and banks explore alternative to debit and credit card transactions and lean into account-to-account -account payment networking, education and additional regulatory guidance around open banking will help usher in this new paradigm. 
Regions where open banking has already made its mark have seen a rise in competition and a downward pressure on margins. This has driven financial institutions or FIs to either find new revenue streams or new cost savings measures, and the emerging open banking landscape with its burgeoning crypto innovation has the opportunity to provide solutions to both. While the impacts it may have on banks and payment service providers must be considered, there is ample opportunity for consumers and benefits for the economies to which they contribute. So first of all, they're talking about North America, Canada, the United States, and Mexico uh, specifically. Um, so let's get deeper into this. Trends that bolster the prospects of open banking, barriers to success, how crypto and open banking intersect, and finally, what is on the horizon. So let me read you their little primer. Again, guys, this is coming from Ripple's Insights blog. So Ripple uh, specifically published this. A primer, open banking takes place when banks and FIs give customers and customer approved third parties digital access to financial data. So what they are saying here essentially is that they are giving FIs, financial institutions, give customers and customer approved third parties so third parties in, yeah, they're saying here that they need to be customer approved, but they're essentially what they're saying is they want to give them access to financial data, your financial data. These third parties are often able to initiate payments as well as download and easily share information on account balances, payments, transactions, investments, and more. Uh, open banking is already gaining traction in the UK and Brazil, so on and so forth. There are a number of benefits to open banking, so uh, just giving some bullet points here. Broadening revenue streams through the API-enabled products, improved customer personalization and satisfaction via increased touch points, and strengthening relevance for FIs by diversifying their client offerings. So another benefit lies in data transfer, which competitive third-party providers can access bank account and transaction data through APIs. Guys, these are third parties accessing your bank account, transaction data through APIs, customers who consent, okay, very important to note, customers who consent to share this information within the open banking system, give providers a better understanding of customer needs, enabling streamlined payment solutions and enhanced user experiences. So on the surface, I mean, I'm pointing out some of the highlights here that I find um, maybe slightly questionable. Yes, they are saying that uh, customers do need to give consent. However, what they are stating here, more third parties, other financial institutions would have access to your personal financial data. Yes, you do have to consent, at least as of now. Okay, Rath Kahneman also uh, brought up this article. What should we glean from the latest Ripple article on open banking? It can open doors for crypto. It turns putting pressure on cost, speed, reliability uh, on legacy systems in the long run. And this would favor XRP, of course. So, uh, you know, just going back to XRP again, this is from the Ripple Insights blog. Us XRP hodlers should be very excited about this kind of thing. But what would it mean for society? He goes on to say, very US Canada focused anything else. So it uh, it focuses specifically on North America. They don't specify Canada or the US in here, but uh, they do say North America. Wrath of Kahneman going on by saying, I wonder why this, why now? To understand if there is a discernible strategy. But this has pitfalls. Articles are often just released on a schedule to keep up visibility, stay relevant, uh, and it's wrong to read too much into them. Sometimes an article is just an article though, right or wrong? So it is interesting that this came out just yesterday. Um, I want to bring up uh, something else that coincidentally just happened in Canada on the 13th, so two days ago now. This from Michael at Val5 Links. Canada set to become crypto powerhouse with the introduction of a new cryptocurrency bill. This would be Bill C-249, uh, and that passed its first reading and hopes to encourage crypto growth in Canada. So all uh, sounding very positive. Several market participants have received the bill positively and recognize its potential to make Canada an industry leader. Globally, regulations are on the rise in the crypto space. Uh, a Canadian MP has proposed the bill. And so uh, there are some details here. Here's a quote. The enactment requires the finance minister to develop a national framework to encourage the growth of the crypto asset sector in developing the framework to consult with persons persons working in the sector who are designated by provinces and territories. The enactment also provides for reporting requirements in relation to the framework. So Canada looking to introduce this bill, this bill coming out or rather news of this bill coming out a day before this Ripple report has been released focusing on North America and open banking, customers giving consent to allow third parties access to their financial information. And yet the tyrannical Canadian government 
decides to go through with this. So this from Greg Price. Guys, this is all over Twitter right now. This is literal madness. Canada's Deputy Prime Minister says under the Emergencies Act, banks can immediately freeze or suspend bank accounts without a court order and be protected from civil liability. Is this still a free country? As you guys know, there are protests happening now in Ottawa, which has spurred on worldwide protests involving big rigs to put an end to the beer flu restrictions uh, that have been enacted around the world. And so the government clearly sees this as a threat, uh, so much so that they are invoking an emergencies act. Listen to this. This is Deputy Prime Minister in Canada, Christia Freeland their relationships with anyone involved in the illegal blockades and report to the RCMP or CSIS. As of today, a bank or other financial service provider will be able to immediately freeze or suspend an account without a court order. In doing so, they will be protected against civil liability for actions taken in good faith. Federal government institutions will have a new broad authority to share relevant information with banks and other financial service providers. Yes, you guys did just hear that right. And even if you do not live in Canada, this should be very, very concerning to have a neighbor to the north, assuming you do live in the United States, enact these measures where they can immediately freeze or suspend bank accounts and essentially have access to the funds in them. Now, this is a sweeping order. This is, uh, I mean, they're framing this as a response to the uh, to the protests in Ottawa, but this isn't just focusing on them. This focuses on all Canadians. And so uh, a lot of people here on Twitter just bringing this up. For the people that want to flip the switch, be very, very careful what you wish for. Oh, and people want a central digital bank as well. Retweeting out Greg Price's tweet here. Um, so yeah, the fact remains. Ripple and XRP going to be at the central of this digital banking revolution. Um, and it is, as I've said on this channel numerous times, it is a double-edged sword. If we hold XRP, obviously that is not a bad thing. We can hedge against the tyranny. But um, again, the double-edged sword, do we really want to live in a society where they are allowed to do this? And uh, just to kind of tie this in, because I feel like, you know, Lark Davis maybe has a point here. Is this a crypto pump based on what is occurring in Canada, what the government just announced yesterday. Are Canadians taking their money out of the bank and putting it into crypto? Well, we also have to be careful where we keep our crypto and uh, Ledger, a company that I use personally, uh, just retweeted this out. So Weedy, in her closer video, she is seen using a Ledger Nano. Now, this is the first time I've seen a crypto cold wallet storage solution in a music video. But again, I just saw this on Twitter and you know, considering what is going on, I felt like if I am speaking to any Canadians right now uh, who have taken money out of their bank accounts, or for anybody for that matter, and have bought more cryptocurrency, guys, I cannot reiterate this enough. Unless you have your cryptocurrency in a cold wallet storage solution, they will always be able to take to seize your cryptocurrency. So I do have an affiliate link in the description. You can use it if you want. You do not have to use it. You don't even have to use this particular device. Uh, there are other cold wallet storage solutions available to you. I just bring this up because what we are seeing now, uh, specifically in Canada. Now, John Deaton also calling this out, powerful call out, uh, retweeting out Nayib Bukele's tweet. Okay, the president of El Salvador. These are people who like to give lessons to other countries about democracy and freedom. Calling out Krista Friedland here. This is one of the top ranking countries in the Democracy Index. Your credibility on these topics is now worth zero. So Nayib Bukele, president of El Salvador, uh, obviously having a very strong opinion about this. And we know what the situation in El Salvador is at this moment in time, this period in history where they are now utilizing Bitcoin as legal tender. So uh, completely a 180 from what these quote unquote democratic countries are doing with their people's money. And guys, I thought I'd bring this up as well because even David Schwartz, yes, Ripple's David Schwartz is also chiming in on this topic. The war on cash was always about political and social control outside the process of law. Retweeting out Zach Vowell's tweet here, Bitcoin is for everyone because all governments are evil, even the liberal democratic ones. Retweeting out this, Trudeau vows to freeze anti-mandate protesters 
bank accounts. So David Schwartz bringing up a very, very astute point. The war on cash was always about political and social control. They cannot control the cash that you have under your mattress. This is why, you know, when you meet people from uh, communist countries who have immigrated to the free world, um, you know, they, they, they talk about hiding money or precious metals under their mattress. Um, and this is the exact reason why. So David Schwartz also mentioning this, if you don't think I committed a crime, why freeze my bank account, he continues. Uh, if you think I committed a crime, why not, you know, charge me with that crime so I can be appropriately punished. Oh, right. If you charge me, you have to prove it and I have due process rights. Ripple cut down here uh, saying, you know, tell us then uh, why would banks adopt XRP if there's a way to freeze it for political reasons? They will not see. Uh, and David Schwartz responds, banks don't want to deal with this, especially when multiple jurisdictions are involved. They can still freeze their own obligations regardless of what assets they use. So David Schwartz uh, coming to Ripple's defense in a way, uh, stating that banks really do not want to be a part of this. Think of it, you are somebody who works very hard and you are at a protest and the government does not see that that protest fits their ideology. So the government goes to your bank and says, well, shut down this customer's bank. Well, the bank and you have a relationship already. You guys do business together. There's a, a bond of trust there. And now the bank has to turn around to you and say, I'm sorry, your funds are frozen. You cannot access them. This isn't a very good situation that would uh, foster the continued trust in said bank. And so here is the dilemma we are in, guys. Jim Rickards here also making a point. Most government officials go to great lengths to avoid bank runs. However, Krista Friedland is going out of her way to start one. So many heavy hitters, Jim Rickards, a uh, very influential economist, New York Times bestselling author with over 200,000 followers weighing in on this. Of course, we've got David Schwartz. Uh, we've got John Deaton retweeting out the president of El Salvador's tweet, Nayib Bukele, commenting on this as well. Meanwhile, guys, the price of Bitcoin has been rallying since the announcement was made. And what is the deal with this Ripple Insights blog on open banking giving third parties access to private customers' information? Is this part of something that they're really trying to keep hidden, yet deciding to write about in plain sight? I mean, unless I pointed this out, I don't think many would be picking up on the nuances in this report. And even Wrath of Kahneman has pointed out, you know, this is very Canada, US focused here. Canada just recently passed this bill, or rather are looking at Bill C-249 with regards to cryptocurrency. So are they trying to put a stranglehold on that as well? As just yesterday, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance, Christian Friedland, just called for a freeze or suspension of bank accounts that do not comply with what Canadian ideologies are today. I don't know guys, but it does not sound like it is moving in the right direction. That is just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.